Welcome to part 8 of my building a new computer vlog. This one is not really about the computer that I just built, but rather my laptop. I've had it for about two years. I use it pretty much entirely for school. And it's very, very crappy. One of the biggest issues it has is that it has an extraordinarily slow mechanical hard drive. So I'd like to replace it with the SSD that I took out of my old computer. This one here. To do that is going to be um, a bit of an ordeal. I've already done step one off camera. Step one was make an image copy of the hard drive that's already in the laptop onto the bulk USB hard drive that I bought. So I've got a copy of the laptop's hard drive. Next thing to do is what I'm about to do right now, which is install the SSD in my current computer so that I can flash the image onto it. Step three is actually getting that hard drive inside of the laptop. But for now, let's focus on step two. Now actually reaching the set of connections on the motherboard is a little bit difficult. I think some of them are hidden behind the video card possibly, but I think I see a couple I can get to. If you can barely see them, there is I think two SATA connections directly beneath the 24 pin power connector from the motherboard. Got it. That was not easy. Booting my computer up for the first time since installing the SSD. Looks like we're perfectly fine. I didn't boot to it. It's this one here. 231 gigabytes, only 43.33. So that was my main hard drive in my old computer. Let's see how flashing an image to that SSD works in Macrium. I see under restore, there's browse for an image file to restore. If I could bulk laptop backup, here's the image for the laptop. So once you load an image, it looks like it shows you all the stats on the partitions on the hard drive, almost as if you had the hard drive plugged in. I'm guessing we need a press restore image. Interesting. Okay, so I ran into issues with not having enough space on the target drive at first, but I think I can actually get this to work. I just need to tweak some things. So I deleted all partitions on my target disk, the SSD. This is my partitions on my image. So I want to copy all of these partitions from this image down here to the SSD. And it looks like you do it sort of just by dragging and dropping. So I can just put this one down here, and then, great, it's good to go. And then it tells you with this blank space how much space you have left for other partitions. You can drag this one on here, and so on and so forth. I run into an issue, though, when I put this one on, which is the main one that has windows on it. I do that. It automatically resizes the max size of the partition down to the remaining space, and keeps the actual amount of space used for files still there. So if you look up here, you can see the max size of this partition is 416 gigabytes, drag it down here, turns to 232 gigabytes. So it re automatically resizes the max partition size to the biggest it can be when I put that down there. But then if I do that, I can't fit the rest of these. By the way, if you're wondering what these other partitions are, particularly this 50 gig one or so, um, I actually have a dual boot of Linux and Windows 10 on my computer. So this is the main Linux partition. I'm hoping the dual boot continues to work after doing this. We'll see. So I think what I probably need to do is drag on the smaller stuff first. Yeah, so I just dragged everything else on there first and then put the main C drive for Windows on last. And it looks like it took up all available space and worked fine. One problem, well, slight problem, more of an issue that I would like to change that I can't is if you look at this, this is with my Windows installation being pared down pretty well. Like I got rid of all downloaded files and movies and a bunch of other stuff. And I'm using 113 gigabytes out of 183. So that's honestly, it's enough to work with. Given that I don't usually put big files on this computer, it's just for schoolwork. I can definitely deal with that. Not that big of an issue, but I would like to probably shrink this Linux partition a bit, given that I'm only using almost 10 gigs. And really, I basically just do programming on my Linux boot. So this could probably be a good 20 or 30 gigabytes smaller. Unfortunately though, perhaps because it's a different file system from this Windows one, it seems like I can't actually change the size of the partition. So if I select it and go to Restored Partition Properties, all these things down here for the partition size are completely grayed out. I can't change anything. Whereas if I go here to the Windows one, I can. So it looks like it's recognizing that I can't change the Linux partition and probably wisely not allowing me to change it because I would probably wreck that installation. Now comes the scary hard part. I need to get this in here. I've looked up a tutorial online, uh, 
how to take it apart and change the hard drive video tutorial. So let's get to it. Shoving a credit card really hard into the space between the bottom and the top of the keyboard until it makes a loud kind of cracking click noise as you separate something is very disturbing. That does not give me much confidence that this thing is going back together. I feel like I'm just breaking tons of plastic everywhere. Anyway, it's done. There should be, I believe, two ribbon cables connected between the keyboard and the bottom of the com computer. By bottom, I mean the part below the this upper part that you see. So I can't take the whole thing off entirely. I need to take it off slightly, reach under, take off the ribbon cables, and then I can take off the whole keyboard part. Otherwise, I'll rip the ribbon cables. Got our first ribbon cable to take off right here. You can see it. It's interesting. I've never actually taken off a ribbon cable before. So you see that little white thing there? That's what the ribbon cable was in. You actually have to flip up the white thing. It's like a lock. You flip it up, and then the ribbon cable just comes out. I didn't expect it to be so easy to service. Got this thing open, got off the last ribbon cable. I'm kind of impressed with how elegant it is. You know, after building a desktop, it's really interesting to see something that's almost like a complete opposite in design philosophy. Granted, my computer build was a lot more compact than most, but still, building a desktop computer, the parts are all made to be very interchangeable, made to be used in all sorts of different cases and all sorts of different configurations, but a laptop is a very specific, proprietary, extraordinarily compact thing. It's kind of beautiful. I mean, it sucks to service, but just look at how compact everything is. So we have the hard drive right here. Looks like it's in a sort of foam anti-vibration thing, which is pretty cool. This must be the battery. That's got to be the battery. I can't see what else that'd be. This is the CD drive. This is the blower motor for exhaust. This computer is very weak, so it really does not need much cooling at all. And this whole thing is the motherboard. I'm assuming on the other side of this board is probably where we'd find the memory and some other things. Before I replace the hard drive, I think I should blow this thing out. Look at that fan. For one, it's an adorable fan. It's got a million blades. It's incredibly tiny. Very, very shallow, thin fan. But also, damn, that's dusty. Okay, much cleaner. Let's turn our attention to the hard drive. Let's get this ribbon cable out of the way. Oh, hmm. Looks like it's kind of glued to the top of the hard drive here. Interesting. I think I gotta take this little thing out now. Yeah, that's in the way of taking taking the hard drive out. There we go. Oh, so that's what the ribbon cable's for, is to transfer all the signals going into these I.O. ports over to the motherboard. Now it looks like we can take this out. Ah, okay, I see. So it gets both the SATA connection and the power. Instead, instead of from kind of loose cables like you would connect in my desktop computer, instead it's this preformed thing. This is the power connection on the left over here. And on this side is the SATA connection. And it just slides right into the slots on the back. Let's extricate this hard drive. So this little metal thing is just kind of, just kind of sits on there once you take out the screws. So at this point, I think I can just take it off. I'm not sure if that sticker thing is part of the hard drive itself. I think it is, or if it's part of the whole thing. I don't know, it looks like it's covering up some possibly sensitive electronics there. I think I can just leave it and I don't think I will need it for the SSD because the SSD doesn't really have any sensitive electronics on the back. So it should be fine. As much as I hate how incredibly agonizingly slow this mechanical hard drive is, I do have to say, packing 500 gigabytes into such a small form factor and having it be an actual mechanical thing that spins at thousands of RPMs, that is incredibly impressive. I mean, look at how small it is. Let's go ahead and put the anti-vibration bit of foam on this new one. Although, of course, it doesn't actually need it because it doesn't vibrate, <laughs> it doesn't spin at all. Uh, but still, that might be important just to keep it from just physically rattling around inside of this chamber. There we go. It's in place. 
I may have put the foam on backwards. Maybe this long part should have been on the other side. I don't remember. I don't think it matters. And there we go. Yeah, just easily slid into place for the uh, power and data connection. Okay, let's get this I.O. board back into place. I've come to the conclusion that I have no idea how ribbon cables actually work. I get that they're a ribbon of a cable, but I mean, how do the ends work? How do they actually connect in thoroughly, making an electrical connection? Okay, well once I had it in, it really wasn't that hard to put back together. I still haven't put all those screws in on the back, because first I want to see if this thing actually works. I don't want to have to take those out again if it doesn't. So let's see if this thing will boot. Okay, that's good. That looks normal so far. Yeah, that's, that's what I normally see. So that's the multi-boot menu asking me if I want to go to Ubuntu or to Windows. So that survived the transfer. Let's go to Windows. Oh my god, it works! Holy crap, it works, and the keyboard works. Um, I haven't tested the I.O. ports, but I'm, I'm pretty confident they work fine. There's the new hard drive, and it has the space that we saw in Macrium. And by the way, it booted up so freaking fast. This computer is very weak in terms of overall processing power. It only has four gigs of RAM and a two core Core i3 processor, so in many regards, it's super weak. However, just changing to an SSD has made such a difference. As soon as I got to the desktop, all my programs, like uh, my icons on the taskbar for Chrome and stuff were there. They were just there waiting for me. Everything just kind of was there as soon as I came to the desktop. Whereas before on the normal mechanical hard drive, every time I booted into Windows, I'd have to wait probably a good 30 seconds to a minute for the stuff to actually appear so I could even click on the tab, uh, click on the button to open Chrome, and then Chrome would take like 30 seconds to open. I mean, it was bad. That was so fast. Okay, uh, one thing I want to do, I want to test out the Ubuntu partition. It shows up in the boot menu, but I want to make sure that it actually works. And I also want to do a check disk. I've heard that after you do this, it's a good idea to do a check disk just to possibly move any sectors that may have gotten, I don't know, missed by Windows, since some things have actually physically moved on the hard drive because of Macrium compressing a larger hard drive down to a smaller one. So first, let's see if Ubuntu works. Yeah, Ubuntu works perfectly fine. All right, let me try a check disk. Check disk is complete, didn't find any errors, only took a couple minutes. Everything looks perfect. This is more successful than I ever thought possible. Let's get the screws back into the back of this thing. All done. Screws are back in place. It's done. <laughs> it works perfectly. Check disk reported no errors. Everything seems to still work on the computer. I'm super surprised. That was terrifying to do and uh, pretty cumbersome to actually get in there. But once I got in there, putting everything back into place and putting it back together was pretty easy, actually and the results are immediately a massive improvement. Feels very good for my laptop to be vastly faster and more usable for spending all of zero dollars and just recycling parts that I otherwise wouldn't have used from my old computer. Super cool. Well, I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. Let's just stare at this mountain of thumbprint cookies for the rest of this. Thanks for watching part eight of the Build a Computer series, Laptop Edition.